What's going on, y'all? This is Master Ace of EMC, and you're checking out Watch Loud. And from Brooklyn, New York, let's meet a sensational rap crew as they join us to do their latest single. The song on the delicious vinyl label is entitled Born to Roll. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Master Ace Incorporated. <laughs> It does not seem like 20 years to me. It really doesn't. Um, I mean, it was like a second ago. Like, we was out in Cali, like, promoting that record. We was, we was shooting a video for INC Ride on, on Hollywood Boulevard. And um, it seemed like it was like yesterday. And um, the years just kind of roll by. You don't really pay attention. It's usually a fan that makes me aware of these milestones, and this time it was you, you know, 20 years. I'm like, word? Like, okay, I didn't even, I'm not keeping count, man, but it's, it's a blessing that people still like the record. Well, when I put out Slaughterhouse in 93, you know, that was, that record was kind of a direct reaction, reaction to the first album and the first single, Me and the Biz, and the whole puppet thing, and there was this whole, you know, kind of backlash with that. And so I just tried to make the hardest album I could make. And then, so Slaughterhouse came out and then that was um, 93. Uh, sort of in the middle of Slaughterhouse, maybe we were on the second single, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I decided to do this remix um, to G-Bass Nigga. Brainiac dum dums bust the scientific approach to the course and the force is centrifugal. Can you find your way through the lyrics that be catching them? Throw another rhyme across the room, baby, fetching <laughs> Which uh, turned out to be this song called Born to Roll. Um, we actually put the song on the B side of Slaughterhouse, the single, and it was a little bit of a fight with Delicious Vinyl. They didn't understand why I was remixing, you know, Jeep Ass Nigga. That, song, that single's over with. We moved on. Why are we doing this? Um, and I kind of put my foot down and fought for that to be the B side of sitting on Chrome. As soon as that record came out, all the DJs on the West Coast, down South, Midwest, flipped that record over and started playing Born to Roll. The record blew up crazy. It became kind of this downhill, it was like an avalanche. It just turned, it was like something nobody expected. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The video was getting crazy spins. We did an X-rated video with the, with the, the, um, the, the bikini girls, like that blew up, you know, um, that was that was when back when Luke Skywalker had the, his little late night video show. He he put my video up playing. It was like number one on there. It was number one on the box. And Delicious Vinyl, my label was like, yo man, like this car culture thing. People are feeling this. Like, and I, I mean, I'm into. I was into cars. I, I, I'm still someone into cars, not nearly as much. But they were the ones who were like, we need to chase this a little bit. Like, this is taking off in a crazy way like can you give us a record that you know kind of piggybacks the success of born to roll very often i refer to that album as my compromise album it was the album that <clears throat> the label asked for and i tried to give them what they wanted while still doing what i wanted to do uh musically and i was like well that's not necessarily what i was creatively going to do um, but I'll tell you what, I'll try to give you what you want and make what I want at the same time. And that was the birth of Sitting on Chrome. Yeah, the album cover was designed by this kid from Houston, Texas named Kid Style. He actually still is an artist. He still is out there. Like, I've been in touch with him here and there, Facebook, texting and stuff like that. The, the cover was based on a photo that my mother had on the wall in, in our apartment when I lived in Flatbush, Brooklyn. It was, a, it was supposed to be New York City kind of in a nutshell. So you had all of this stuff happening. Like there was like a cab driver cutting somebody off, giving them the finger. There was something over here happening. There was a dude doing five car Monty. You know, I used to look at that photo like every day before I went to school. And that was the inspiration for the cover. So I showed Kid Style um, this picture and told him to do his best rendition of what that was. And he created Sitting on Chrome to cover. Let's get a few names up in here. I'm Lachey. Hi, I'm Paula Perry. DJ Lord Kasim. Master Ace. Lord Digger. The idea there was everybody might not like 
you know, my my way of rhyming, my flow, my style, what I bring to the table. So let's bring other characters in to add little bits and pieces. It was kind of like the 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 chronic, the way Dr. Dre put the chronic together in a certain way. It was kind of like that same thinking. Um, and so when it, when we got to the sitting on Chrome record, at that point, Ice and Unique, who who were rolling with me on Slaughterhouse, all of a sudden they had kind of gotten these permanent jobs working at the with the Board of Ed and stuff. So they couldn't really roll like that. So that gave Digger a little bit bigger role. So he started to roll roll more. Um, Paula Perry was just kind of that. I needed that female MC to just kind of add flavor to it. So brought her along, and and then Lachey was somebody who I was friends with from the neighborhood in Flatbush, and she sang a little bit. So I said add add, add another flavor to it. That was what the whole concept of the Mass Days Incorporated what was. When I first signed with Delicious Vinyl um, in '93 or '92, um, I was writing graffiti at that time. And I was writing ASE, that was my graffiti name. Um, when they signed me, I really wanted to completely change my name completely. Um, I was trying to, they were like, no, you can't change your name. You know, we're signing you for based on what you did. And so I said, okay, well, I want to change the spelling. M-A-S-T-A-A-S-E. Nah, we don't like that. People are going to be confused. So we compromised and we kept the A-C-E, but they let me get rid of the ER. Um, I wanted to be as far away from the cold chilling uh, era of my career as possible. So that's why the name changed, the spelling changed. Um, and then when we started working on these records, um, I was producing a lot of these songs and um, I didn't want people to know that Master Ace was producing the records. So I came up with a new person, a new producer name, Ace One. So A-S-E-O-N-E, -E, which was my graffiti name. So you'll see on a lot of the credits, produced by or co-produced by Ace One, which is really me. Um, it was, I'm just, I'm always trying to create these like other personas, other pseudo persons that, um, so that one, one, one character doesn't in any way, um, I guess, get in the way of the other, other character. And that's, that's why I did that. Sitting on Chrome fits in a weird spot for me career-wise. When that, when that album came out, you know, off the success of Born the Road and that album dropping, um, and it, was, it was my best selling album, but um, that album created issues in sort of my social interaction with my own hometown. I started to get this, you know, you, you gotta remember that what was happening at that time. There was this whole East Coast, West Coast dichotomy going on. And you had to pick a side back then. And I wasn't picking a side. I was like trying to ride the middle. Like, yo, I'm from Brooklyn, but I'm making records that appeal to people in the West and I'm still rocking for y'all. So I said, I'm gonna create this sound called, you know, um, called, uh, it's like East Coast bass music, Brooklyn bass music. And I'm gonna sort of force both coasts to rock with me. And what wound up happening really was that uh, I would be approached on the streets in, 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 in Brooklyn, like, yo, man, some of those West Coast stuff, man, what you doing? Like, and or I, I would also hear a lot, uh, what you doing out here? I mean, you me, I live out here. You live out here? I thought you lived on the West Coast now. Nah, I don't live, I, I'm assigned to a labor block. I don't live out there though. Um, so yeah, the misconception started happening. I started to get the label of, West Coast sellout, um, and all of this was created by me making this album sitting on Chrome that appealed to both coasts. Um, maybe it didn't appeal to both coasts, maybe it only appealed to one coast. I just know that um, I garnered a whole new fan base of people out West, down South, even Midwest, that did not know my career up to that point. The success of sitting on Chrome as an album um, the single, the IC Ride, Born to Roll, all of those records that was that were labeled, you know, West Coast records, opened um, my name up to a whole new base of fans. To this day, I actually, I tour more on the West Coast than I do on the East Coast. That's just what it is. It just it just is what it is. Um, I embrace my position and my place in history. Um, I'm, I feel like I definitely 
opened up doors for other artists from the East Coast to be more daring and go out and experiment with sound and not be afraid to embrace other sounds and make records that sounded a little bit more like this or like that. You know, maybe now it's a little bit too far, uh, but I feel like I, I was one of the people that kind of blazed that trail. And, you know, I may, I may have gotten assassinated for it, you know, in, in, in a certain way, my character. Um, but that was my cross to bear, you know, and uh, I'm cool with that. I, I'm, I'm happy with what I did musically on that album.